I have a feeling that once this is over, all of us are going to be going online to book tickets. <laughs> um, so I hope your credit cards are ready and shined. Uh, Pilar, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And I wanted to open this by asking, when you're booking for yourself, so not for a story, yeah. no editorial reasons, what are the top things you look for? And I guess it, it all depends on whether you want, let's say, a, a total R&R &R vacation. Um, just having come off of one, um, I, we, my husband and I take one, exactly one trip alone a year mm -hmm. for, for three days <laughs> only, um, because we both travel a lot for work and, and have two small boys, not so small anymore, I still call them small. Um, so direct flight is key for us because it's all about efficiency and we can't mm -hmm. have you know risk delays and, and all that kind of stuff with multi multi-hop travel. So that's, you know, that's the sort of the culture-free mm -hmm. travel that we do. Um, and, you know, but with our boys, it's a whole different thing. I'm all about, you know, packing the, you know, the limited time that we have, whether it's over their spring break or Christmas, with absolute, you know, full-on culture. And, so, and I try, I have an old a son who's 12, who I, I try and kind of weave it into something that one of them is learning in school so that there's some resonance. So, you know, two completely different modes. Um, one is all about no, no guilt, no culture, mm -hmm. and the other one is all about jam it in because you know um, these are precious years to make an impression and they're so lasting. There's nothing like travel for children um, in terms of really, you know, they, they make connections that, they, that no textbook can teach them. Absolutely, I mean, the last vacation I took with my son, we uh, swam with wild dolphins. We just, you know, we went out on a Heaven. boat with this captain and they took us to a cove where, where dolphins were hunting. And for him, you know, he could have learned in school a million times over about how important it is to save wildlife. But that one experience, he I, still talks about it. I was just going to say, I bet he still talks about it. Yeah. And draw, you know, mm -hmm. write about it. And once they start writing and um, it's so, you know, you know, if you are lucky enough to be able to do it. And, you know, there's great domestic travel. There's great you know, great road trips, train trips that you can do that are, you know, I think that's something that we're seeing a lot of actually is increased mm -hmm. domestic travel. Um, I think, you know, especially with the, you know, the anniversary of the national parks coming up, for example, I think, you know, lots of publications will be doing their homage to, um, you know, right, what's right here under our yeah. nose, you know, and there are probably many of us, and myself included, who ha I haven't been to Mount Rushmore, you know, things like that that are just right here that we should, you know, we should be celebrating. We're always looking across the pond. How do you wade through the amount of information that's available? Because you go to places, <laughs> it's I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to even name websites, and obviously of you're, you're kind yeah. of the gold standard in travel, but... But there are many, many but good But when ones, you try to yeah. start to cross-reference reviews and whatever, and the pictures are, you don't know, they might be from 20 years ago, and then you get there and like, surprise! Yes, exactly. Um, like, how do you figure, how do you narrow it down and figure it out? I mean, I think, you know, the thing that we try to do in the magazine is exactly what we as humans and journalists especially we, mm -hmm. it's the cross-reference thing you sort of take you know you take a gold standard and then you take a kind of personal maybe it's a blogger an Instagram or somebody somebody whose point of view whose sort of filter you respect and you sort of narrow the universe that way and I think what we try to do is identify those people who move us you know um, as editors and we say I like their particular point mm -hmm. of view they they're they're not all about the Michelin star meal they're about the street food and, mm -hmm. and that's you know so you know for me usually it starts with you know how how long do I have you know what's the point of the trip and then I start to narrow 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 with you know people that I trust and we sort of replicate that editorially in the magazine and on the website sort of we identify people um, you know, who we feel like really have their ear to the ground and are, are confident enough to kind of buck whatever somebody else says is this is the restaurant or the hotel. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that we're always trying to, it's our job as journalists to sort of poke holes in all these things. And how do you get over the dread of travel? Like we were, like we were just talking a little bit backstage yeah. about, you know, you start to think about the trip to the airport, the delays, the going through yeah. security, the the sitting on the run. I mean, like it, it almost it, it it almost takes the joy out of it, it does. the destination. It's so true, and that's you know one thing. Um, you know, there there are a few things. I, I'm a I'm an absolute minimalist when it comes to packing, and I feel like the more nimble you can be to like jump on another flight if you have to, or mm -hmm. you know not face the dread of losing your luggage, all those things that can really kind of crush your so carry on. vacation. Carry, carry on. on. And my children stuff in their backpacks. They're, they, 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 
get to bring what they can fit in their backpacks, essentially. Like, we do not, we never check unless it's, you know, we're doing something, you know, really rugged. Like three weeks in Europe or something like that. Well, you know, rugged, even but, then, yeah. I think you're doing laundry. You know, you're not carrying three weeks worth mm -hmm. of clothes. You gotta do your laundry at some point. So really, if you can pack for 10 days or even eight days, you can pack for three weeks. I mean, that's the same amount of clothes. Easier, to, easier said, in, in the winter, I mean in the summer versus winter when you have fewer layers. But that's one thing that I think minimizes the sort of, you know, the, the dread. And then I think, you know, I, I also try not to anticipate, this is just like a kind of mental game that I've had to master over the years, but I really don't anticipate until kind of just before. And then I, I'll let myself, you know, get anxious if it's an anxiety provoking kind of trip. But I think it's, um, you know, I, I think if you, you don't have too much expectation, it helps to kind of minimize anxiety and carry on. <laughs> and what kind of feedback do you get from people who are hesitant about traveling? Because right now you're seeing all these stories about don't go to South America because of the Zilka virus. And, sure. You know, sure. don't go to any areas that might have Ebola, and that's like a huge chunk of the world. Totally. Um, I think uh, there there is always fear. Um, you know, at, at every period, if we look back at, you know, I think about the things that, you know, we were, you know, growing up in California, it was earthquakes mm -hmm. and, and, and the Cold War and, and all of these things. Um, and now, of course, it's a, a, a very insidious and sort of all-encompassing terrorist threat um, that, you know, we all feel and then we all have to sort of check the travel advisories and do our best to inform ourselves. But ultimately you have to go back to the statistics. And when you look at the statistics, you know, am I going to Yemen? No. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I actually had a conversation just the other day um, about, you know, travel to Egypt, which, mm -hmm. you know, is a, is, a really, is a really tricky one, you know? It, it, this, I had a, a, a trip travel, a, a, a trip planned two years ago that I had to cancel last minute, and I was feeling very sad that we hadn't mm -hmm. gone and coinciding with my husband's, I mean, my, uh, my older son's Egypt unit. Um, and, you know, uh, now it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's a question. You know, if I, if I didn't have children, I would go in a heartbeat. Um, mm -hmm. With children, it's, it's a it's a You have to question. rethink it. You have to, I mean, it's, I, I'm not saying no, because I'm actually, I'm actually actively researching it. Um, but it's not just my decision. Um, it's also... You know, it's my family's decision as well. But I'm always, I'm very bullish about pushing to area. I really feel that it's my responsibility in the position that I'm in and also just as a human that, you know, we have to continue to support these places because they, if they become destabilized, then they become susceptible to radicalization. And that's, that's a, a vicious circle that we have to short circuit. Um, and so when I, when I, contemplate these areas. I was just in Istanbul, as you saw, mm -hmm. over Christmas, and the attacks happened two days later. And, you know, um, I'm probably strange in this sense that I didn't say, oh my gosh, I, you know, I survived. My instinct was I'd go back in a heartbeat because, I, you know, for me, again, it's a, you know, it's an odds game. Um, I, I, I work in the World Trade Center. I take the subway to work every yep. single day. You know, it, it, it's, it, uh, you know, that, these are just the realities that we live in, and you have to go back. You know, you are likelier to be killed in a car accident abroad or, you know, by some other cause than you are to, to you know, follow the hands of a terrorist attack. That said, you don't want to, you don't want to go into an area where you have a target on your back. Um, you know, uh, and you know, uh, Turkey is is a, again one of these sort of tricky places right now, given given the recent news in Ankara, um, and given the way the government is going. Um, you know, so that's another question mark. But I, I still believe that we have to continue to support. Um, you and you talk to Egyptians, um, and we have many experts on the ground mm. who are saying, you know, the pyramids are empty. And that is just crushing. <laughs> that is crushing. I mean, it's one of the great wonders of the world. It's crushing. And, and the more sort of, you know, uh, fragile that, that, you know, economy becomes as a result of the absence. The more of, destabilized it becomes. <sighs> it just know. feeds on itself. Exactly. So if you are even a little brave, <laughs> I feel like 
you know, uh, the chances are very, very high, or rather, better said, the chances are very low that anything will happen. Well, and especially um, who would have thought that Paris, of all places, right? So there you go. I think that's right, and I think it's um, important to even look at the sort of um, the psychology of fear. You know, people went right back to mm -hmm. Paris with no problem because it's not other. It's very familiar culture, you know. Um, yeah, I don't he, think anyone skipped Paris Fashion Week because they were nervous. Correct, and, um, and yet that was devastating mm -hmm. and much more random the way that that, you know, that terrorist attack occurred, the randomness of it was, was much more terrifying than a very public, targeted, you know, prominent place, I think. But it's funny when you, when you, you know, look at human behavior, it's, it's the, the otherness that scares us. And I think we have, to, we have to pay attention to that because it's not right. And I have a question for you. I'm personally really curious. What compels, despite every news story, coming out that should dissuade people, what compels people to travel to North Korea? Because I feel like every week you read yeah, about a tourist that's being tried and sentenced to like <laughs> 500 years it's of so hard true. labor, like, and really? yet, and yet. Could not be a more hostile environment and yet they, for a Westerner. They won't, they won't yeah. go to Egypt because that's dangerous. No, and I think it's probably just the, the, the verboten. Mm -hmm. The very, the verboten nature, of the, the so extreme other, it's, exo it's exotic. In, in a way that, uh, I don't know, I mean, it is strange. I mean, it would right? be interesting to sort of look at the profile, you know, of, of you, know, the, you know, I think some of the most intrepid travelers, sure, are people who, you know, have some sort of heritage. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But I agree, it, it is really strange. <laughs> so you have no plans to send <laughs> no. a reporter there? <laughs> no, I really, I really don't, actually. It's one of the few places that, uh, no, no. <laughs> is there, um, and I'm sure you've been everywhere at this point, but has there been a place? Not everywhere. <laughs> well, probably, well, definitely more places than I have. But have you, is there a place that has surprised you, whether in a negative or positive way, mm -hmm. where you really went in expecting one thing and you mm -hmm. left feeling that it was totally other? Yeah, um, you know, let's think about that. You know, it's funny, I was just having this conversation with a colleague that, um, you know, even a city as well traveled and beloved, you know, by everyone as, as Marrakesh, which is an incredibly mm -hmm. beautiful and interesting city. Um, I never feel afraid anywhere, you know, and I, I feel like, you know, I, I rarely feel afraid and I shouldn't say never, but, you know, it's funny how you can have a false sense of security in certain places that, you know, that um, are so well uh, traveled and that, you know, see so many tourists from, from everywhere uh, that, you know, being a woman walking alone at a certain hour, even in a place that you, you feel that you, you just get that sort of shudder mm -hmm. of fear. And I didn't expect to feel it there. And it was sort of there. And that's about being a woman. I'm sure being a Western woman and not, you know, I certainly wasn't dressed provocatively in any way, but it was sort of, it's, it's, a, it's a funny feeling that I think as women, you know, that, that sort of, that cloud that passes over you. And yeah. even in, in, there are places in, in, you know, even in Italy, if you're, you know, where everything is wonderful and warm and, you know, but you go, you, 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 you take a sort of a, a turn and, and you can feel vulnerable in places. Absolutely. And these are obviously not dangerous places and this is not, but it's more just that, human behavior is sort of consistent everywhere. And so, you know, there is a, um, a, a false sense of security just as there is a false sense of fear. So they're almost like, you know, opposite sides of the same coin. So it really kind of, you know, this idea sort of is, um, I guess, the theme of this talk. <laughs> Um, that, you know, you have to have your eyes open, you have to be, be informed and be smart, no matter where you are, if you're in your own neighborhood, you know, I mean, there, um, we, I live in Park Slope and we had a... So do I. You do. I do. <laughs> and we had a um, break-in right after the hurricane. Not a break-in, it was, well, yes, it was. Um, and, um, but, you know, I just, I choose to, you know, not be afraid. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our, uh, we, the cops came over and took some fingerprints or whatever it was. And, um, you know, obviously it was sort of a looting moment, um, uh, you know, and, and the cops said, you know, people think this is the safest neighborhood in Brooklyn. And you feel it's, you know... It's like you know, your the neighbor. Cosby show, yes, you, know? Yes. Um, you know, but, uh, but he said, but actually because of its proximity to the park, 
you know, it's a, you know, th there are a higher number of robberies than there are in what, than other neighborhoods in Brooklyn that you would consider to be more dangerous. So it's just sort of, it's again, it's just have, it's just keeping your eyes open. Mm -hmm. It's not, that's not about, that doesn't make me more afraid. It doesn't, it just makes you think, you know, human behavior is pretty universal. Um, you know, and, 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 and you know, it, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you still have to keep your Be eyes Be smart. Open. Yeah, exactly. And what are the top three things that you would never pack? Um, top three things I would never pack. Golly, that is a tough one. A hair dryer, never. Um, if, I, if there isn't one in a hotel, then I will slick the hair back. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I, I limit myself to three pairs of shoes only. So no more than three pairs, not four. Um, and uh, thick sweaters, even if it's freezing. Why? Just because they take up too much room, I carry on. You just wear like a hoodie and <laughs> Well, no, I wear, I wear like, you know, I'll, I'll multiple layers, mm -hmm. but never a thick sweater. It's not very exciting. <laughs> no, that's interesting. That's, I, I think that's fascinating. <laughs> well, and let's uh, turn it over to our audience. Hello. Come on, people. Spring break's coming up. I know you got questions. Yeah, hello. How are Hi. you? Hi. Good. How are you? I'm good. So I do travel a lot, and I always travel in groups. And you were saying that you and your husband once a year travel alone, mm -hmm. and people always tell me that I should travel alone. It's a great experience. Since you have traveled alone, what are the perks or benefits of traveling alone? So... Uh, traveling alone, uh, uh, traveling alone, alone, or traveling as a couple—two different things. But traveling alone, alone, um, I maybe is my favorite thing on earth to do. Really? Um, yes. Uh, and I think part of the reason is because you're much more open. Um, you meet more people than if you're traveling with a friend or with a family member. I mean, it's wonderful to travel with people that you're close to, of course, or you know, provided they're a good traveling companion. Um, but um, you know, especially when I was younger, I did more solo travel, um, you know, more time, um, and sort of that backpacker's mentality where you stay in a place where young people congregate and you, you just meet people. And it's not just something that young people do. I think this is, you know, um, I think this is universally true. You go somewhere, if you're not sort of buddied up with somebody, you're going to be that much more sort of open to meeting new people and, and actually taking, pushing yourself, taking more risks, um, ironically, than you would with somebody else because you're alone. And people seek sort of any companionship, camaraderie, especially in your parts of the world where, you know, um, you're in the minority. Um, and, you know, I think there's something really nice about it. Um, and, you know, you and also you, you, you learn to sit with yourself and sit with your thoughts, which, you know, the way we live, especially in New York City, you don't have that much time to do that. Hi, uh, so continuing on that, on the opposite end of the spectrum, I haven't taken a vacation in over two years. Wow, I know, I've been it's an American up. affliction. I know, I've been yeah. caught up with that New York City hustle. Mm. Um, now for a quick three-day getaway, you know, I always <laughs> like getting spot. a different opinion, especially yeah. from an expert. Uh, to clear the mind, body, and soul, would you have like a top recommendation? Does that have to so, be anything fancy? So, like nature or city, or uh, let's say nature. Um, I mean, you know, are you, are you a direct flight kind of person? Uh, I could take my sweet time. Either or is fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and uh, which time? What kind? What time of year? Like, let's make it next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so, still, uh, are you like a Caribbean kind of person? Sorry. Yeah, for sure. Just let him have the mic, for God's sake. She's, she's a reporter. She's going <laughs> to oh, be yeah. asking. This is like trip therapy. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I love the islands. So, okay, so you're an island person. Um, so I, I'm, I'm a huge Mexico fan, but in New York, it's a, it's, it's a lot easier to get to the Caribbean. There are lots of direct flights to places like Turks and Caicos, like the, you know, um, the Dominican Republic, where I just came from, which was beautiful and actually... You know, there are parts of it that are super touristy and parts that are pristine. So you have sort of the jungle and mangroves and the beach, the pristine beaches. And it's a very, very nice culture um, and very warm and, and um, beautiful. So th that's one thing. Okay. <laughs> and uh, send you a tweet a little bit <laughs> Totally. Later. And on the city count, I would recommend Mexico City, which is just spectacular. Thank you. Hi. 
Hi. Um, <laughs> so giving your profession, I'm sure from friends or people that you just know throughout life, they always ask, yeah. what's the one place that I need to go before I die? What is yeah. your response to that question? Gosh, well, it depends on the person. I feel like I'm my my job is sort of half therapist, and you know, usually it's like okay, you know, I'm it's there's usually an intake session. I need I, like I peppered this gentleman with all sorts of questions. Are you a this kind of person or that kind of person? I would say it, you know it always goes back to are you a kind of cultural you know historical that kind of you know culture seeking traveler or are you a nature seeking traveler? And those are kind of the, the biggest binaries, I would say. Um, you know, the, I have a bucket list um, that, you know, I haven't been to Petra, for example, in Jordan. In, um, you know, so, so for me, it's a little bit more like, you know, the, the, that kind of travel. Um, I've done, you know, a fair amount of travel in my life, but I, I do tend to sort of fall along the lines of, you know, the, um, you know, seed of civilization and, and um, extreme culture. Um, so that would be one for me, and um, you know, you could uh, you could go, but we could go by continent, <laughs> we could go by climate, um, but that would be a big one for me. Hey, thanks for coming. It's very thanks. inspiring to hear you speak so confidently about traveling and traveling alone. I was watching the nail salon TV yesterday, and it had facts about men and traveling, and it was like two out of five check their luggage, and then it said I think one out of ninety-seven met their partner. Should I be meeting men at the airport? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's amazing. Airport, you know, it, now you're a dating advisor so too. Interesting. I do think though there is something about traveling and meeting people and going back to, I think, um, the original, the first question about solo travel, I do think that you are stronger, more confident, more curious. I believe that everybody is a better version of themselves when they're on a, on a trip that they're enjoying. I think it also, um, you do things, you take risks that you, don't, that, that you don't take on your native soil. And there's something very empowering about that. And I think when you feel empowered, you are probably the most attractive version of yourself. So yes, in short, <laughs> that, would, that would be um, a, uh, yes, an endorsement for finding, finding a mate um, when in transit. Just don't, do, just don't do what I do and get into arguments with TSA people because I assure you that is the number one way you won't meet a man at the airport. <laughs> yeah, I, I've gotten in fights yeah. you know, with women. You will I not take my Chanel cream. You will not. It is under 1.5 ounces. Exactly. And just, just, despite yeah. its extravagant container. Yes. Like, no. And no. then, yeah. Anyway, that is last hilarious. question. We'll take our final question from an online viewer. So Laura would like to know, what are your thoughts about traveling to Cuba this year? You know, I'm um, actually about to go. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, it's obviously the moment, um, I think, before it becomes completely saturated. Yes. I think it's the moment to go. And, you know, the for better or worse, and actually it's the good news and the bad news, that um, it is underserved by the hospitality market, um, you know, in terms of hotels and, you know, the infrastructure just isn't there, which is kind of what's wonderfully appealing about it. So... Um, if you're expecting, you know, fabulous accommodations, you know, that's not going to happen. I mean, you can get sort of okay ones. Um, and a lot of people are doing it by boat, which I think is really interesting. Um, but I think it actually is the time to go. Um, I think it's, you know, it will, um, it will change a lot. So I think now is the moment. Well, thank you so, so, so much. You, you totally inspired me. Thank you. And thank you for the great questions. Thanks for having me.